decline to answer as to whether I've been in touch with you know, either the defense or um, the DA's office. Is Donald Trump lying when he says it was all going to just be a retainer? Yeah, I, I don't believe that, and I've never believed it. And if you go back and look at the interviews, in fact, that you and I conducted back in 2018, uh, I've always scoffed at that and, and thought it was ridiculous. A ridiculous Trump defense there, as fact-checked by Michael Avenatti. He just spoke out with us from prison tonight. He's been on his own path from lawyer to inmate. He's eyeing this trial next week on the issues that whatever you think of him, and we discussed some of the legal problems and convictions he's had, he did ignite all of this six years ago in the way that he represented Stormy Daniels. Avenatti's newsworthy remarks from prison and next week's trial are not strictly a legal matter. They also involve this unprecedented American story. And the repercussions could go from New York to D.C. to the campaign trail. So we go beyond the courtroom now with one of our journalistic political experts, Washington Monthly's Margaret Carlson. Welcome. Hello. All right. What an interview. Kudos to you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how you got I don't know how you got him to talk from prison, but congratulations. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, as I mentioned, and this applies to many witnesses we've heard from over the years, um, their legal status may merit criticism. People may have strong views, understandably. And yet there's a reason why so many prosecutors and others have, have spoken with them and gathered their evidence. These people uh, were in really central roles. And so I'm curious what you thought of what Michael Avenatti said there, both um, not just on the law, but his view, and he has some understanding of, of the sort of public perceptions of media, um, about the fact that this is not necessarily an airtight case uh, for the public about Donald Trump's alleged wrongdoing. Well, it, it may not be. It looks to, you know, it looks to, I think, normal people easier to understand than the documents cases and, mm. and maybe even the January 6th case, uh, because it's, you know, it's, 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 I don't know, Hollywood housewives kind of, kind of case. And I, I'm disappointed in that it is the first case and it's the tawdry mm. one. It doesn't go to the real uh, uh, problems that, that Donald Trump uh, presents to the country. Uh, at the beginning of the interview, he said he was going to surprise you, and I didn't notice any surprise on your face because, you know, once we learned about Michael Avenatti, who was just ever present, um, he, I mean, he's comparing himself to Michael Cohen favorably, and I don't remember Michael Cohen defrauding a paraplegic um, mm. and, I, and stealing, I mean, $300,000 is a lot to steal from anybody. And Stormy Daniels didn't appear to be sitting that high in the income level. Uh, it, it's like astonishing. But you were, I mean, we can't be surprised that he now doesn't think this is the right case at the right time because he's not in it. Mm. He's not central anymore. He's sitting in a prison. And it probably was a relief to him to have a, 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 a platform to talk about it because he's not sitting in a chair as counsel and he's probably not even going to be a witness for the reason that he said Michael Cohen wouldn't make a good witness. And that's because he's a fraud and a liar and a cheat. Mm. Yeah, I hear your criticism there, which is rooted, as we mentioned earlier, but I'll repeat, and sometimes viewers come in and out as you get ready for dinner on the East Coast, that uh, I mentioned this to him in our interview. I asked him about it. He's been convicted of crimes related to dishonesty. Um, and Mr. Cohen's crimes... Uh, were chiefly on behalf of Donald Trump, and he ultimately cooperated with them, although there were also, we should mention, some tax issues. Um, I do know, and I can say to share with viewers, as we have a little more time now, uh, there are a whole range of media requests, I, I happen to know, from Mr. Avenatti. So we were able to arrange this prison phone call over time. Um, but I would not be surprised if you saw him in other media soon, because he's just such a clearly newsworthy figure here. Uh, Mr. Cohen... Uh, of course, has been on this program and others. I should mention tonight, he's posting online, rebutting uh, some of what Avenatti says, and we have an open invite out to him to come on uh, and respond directly. Uh, but here's a little bit of that point you referenced of what Avenatti was saying about Cohen and witnesses. Every case needs to have one or two primary witnesses who tell the story. From my perspective, uh, I surmise that the DA is going to use potentially Michael Cohen or Stormy Daniels for that purpose. Um, and, and I think that has the potential to be a disaster. Uh, Michael Cohen is a, and you know I've never been a fan of, of Michael for various reasons. Um, it, you know, he's, he's a serial liar. He's shown himself to be incapable of telling the truth. Margaret? Well, uh 
as you said, he he told he 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 lied in the interest of a candidate and a president, uh, which is mu much different than what Michael Avenatti did. He was always lying and cheating on his on his own behalf. Hmm. Um, and Michael Cohen, I think, makes a good witness. I saw his congressional testimony. He's not a bad witness, hmm. and he's repentant. I don't see any repentance from Michael Avenatti. Did you? Um, he, well, I'll just was, say and let you finish. Uh, I wouldn't describe him as overly contrite, if you're asking for my observation. Um, but through the legal process, he did on record in court um, say that he that he was contrite, and he did go through that process. And we've seen others not do that. So people can draw their own conclusions, but he's he's made an effort to say that in public. Well, that happens in court. I mean, when my parents were about to discipline me, I was suddenly very contrite. Uh, but I don't I don't think he feels it. Mm. Um, because he, even in, in the way he spoke with you, he's... Uh, and, oh, here's one thing I, I do think went too far. Yes, he should be punished because he, he you know, Nike, Kimberly Clark, the, the, the four clients, he smaller clients like the paraplegic, he, he defrauded. I don't think he should have been put in a cell with a drug lord. That strikes me as the kind of thing that, that someone might do as an extra little bit of punishment. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.